driver is always the first one in, last one out. Always. You never, ever leave anybody in the carriage without a driver, without the lines in their hands. And it needs to be somebody that can do something about it. The other, one of the other things that you'll notice is that the tip of the shaft is just even with the front of the chest. If it's forward of that, it, it's too far forward, the horse is going to catch their face on it. Uh, you may get some rearing, you may get some really other ugly things. They flip over and cool stuff like that. Um, ladies, anything? True. If it's too far back, it's likely to jab them in the shoulder when you make your turns. So, and if it's too high, it's going to poke them in the neck when you turn. That tends to get them a little aggravated as well. Would you ladies please take the rail? I would like you to demonstrate the three gate, the three trots, and we'll just do one walk at this point. So if you'd start by walking. And you can cut the arena, that's fine. The three trots are slow trot, working trot, and trot off. The foot placement is very specific about those. In a slow trot, the hind foot does not meet the print of the front foot. In a working trot, the hind foot lands directly in the, tr the hoof print of your front foot. And in a trot on, that hind foot's going to go past where the front foot was. Would you ladies pick up a working trot, please? Okay, if you look at Higgins, his hind foot is not meeting his front foot. And I would like both of these horses to go on just a little bit more. There you go. There you have a nice working trot. Both of them, the hind foot is beating the print of the front foot. It takes a while to get used to looking at that. I have the advantage of living on dirt roads. So I can go down the dirt road and come back and check my tracks if I need to. They're both nicely collected. They aren't over-collected, they're comfortably collected. Please come to a slow trot. Slow trot used to be called a collected trot. There weren't enough people that could do it correctly, so they just changed it to a slow trot. Sort of like the road trot used to be an extended trot. There weren't enough people that did it an actual extended trot, so they changed it to road trot. All right, let's trot on. What we're looking for is for them to overstride from hind foot. A hind foot's going to go well in front of that front foot. There you go. Can you push her just a little more? There you go. All right. Is everybody comfortable with, with the three gates? Do you understand them and can you see them? Any questions? Yes? Can you walk down? Pardon? Okay. She was pointing out that when you are carriage driving properly, the driver must wear a hat, male or female. You must carry a whip. 
the whip is supposed to reach the left front shoulder of your furthest forward horse. And uh, always wear brown gloves. The tradition for that is that then you don't get oil on your hands. And the brown continues the color line of the reins. These gals are both wearing aprons. The purpose of the apron was to keep your clothes clean so that when you got to town, got out, you could take off your apron, lay it in your carriage, take off your gloves, and you'd be ready to go meet people. One of the other things that I require of all my drivers is they must wear glasses. I have had several instances where I had a rock kicked up when I was driving, and if I had not had glasses on, I would not have eyes. I mean, it would have been really serious. So I really like some kind of protective glasses. There are um, spares kits that get carried in these vehicles, and they have to have basically what you need for emergency repairs going down the road. And some people include a whole lot more things than that in them. Oh, and some people have a very nifty little compartment to put their spares in. Okay. But she has a compartment to put hers in. Liz would carry hers in her basket. The way those baskets are built, you actually can strap it to the back side of the basket so it's out of the way of your legs. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to worry about it. Um, you can get them in nicely made leather cases with all the stuff in them. Um, but you got to make sure that the wheel wrench that's in there actually will fit your wheels. Uh, she has hooks that come out and the nut very nicely is on the outside of it. Some of them, the nut is recessed. So you have to have a special wrench to get into that recessed nut. Uh, we take our carriages wheels off at least once a year and grease everything. It's a pain in the neck and uh, both of these vehicles have uh, bearings in them. Mine are old enough that what they have to keep the wheel tight is leather, leather washers. And so you need to keep some of that on hand. I always have some in the spare kit so that if I'm going down the road and when I get a, a wheel goes to wobbling because the leather has given up the ghost, I can go ahead and repack it as I'm, while I'm out on the road. It can be a real pain in the neck. It really can. Uh, some of the spares kits have waterproof matches in them. Those are a good idea. Yes, ma'am. Depends, depends on the horse and it depends. What she asked is, when I'm changing leathers out on the road, where is my horse? Some, some horses will stand quietly while I fix things and other horses, I take the tie to a tree. <laughs> just don't have to worry about them while I'm doing what I need to do with my carriage. Pardon? Yeah, if I can find a tree. Hey, we have, we have a tree on our property. It's three quarters of a mile from the house and there's one. <laughs> I was watching a Reba show years ago, and the fellow said he was headed to our part of Texas for a family reunion. And they said, well, is it flat there? And they said, he said, oh, yeah, it's flat. So if you stand on a coffee can, you can see three states. <laughs> That's true. Um, we have set up one of, the, one of the most fun things to do in carriage driving is combined eventing or combined driving. That includes dressage, a cross-country course with hazards, and then a cones course. Uh, they are, it's very much like combined eventing in that first you have your dressage, then you have your cross-country course, of course theirs has jumps, ours has hazards, and then they have a show jumping course, which is for precision. Ours is a cones course and it is for precision and the higher levels you go, the tougher the cones courses get. And, and the tougher the hazards get. Um, and training level, you're probably gonna have three gates, A, B, and C. 
always, always red is on your right. So it doesn't matter which way you're going. If red's not on your right, you're going to be DQ. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, and if, and if you're colorblind, you're in deep trouble. So I set up two. I set up a small hazard, and I also set up. Um, I'm sorry, Hunter set up for us a set of cones in a serpentine. The reason we did that is dressage is all about your horse being balanced, bending properly, moving comfortably under himself. Because by doing those things, you can get through things faster. So if you gals will, if you would go ahead and go through the serpentine and come back, and she'll show you, hopefully, we, all, we always hope that goes well. Come down on this end. Yes. All right, this, this smaller vehicle was brought over because it also is a pleasure cart for pleasure driving. Depending on the company, depending on the vehicle, you can get wooden wheels. And that's one of the things that carriage driving sort of requires is wooden wheels. When you get up to this level, see the horse bending nicely, moving up under herself. See she, how she changes her bend as she goes through. <laughs> All right, ladies. There are some people that say that the reason people come to CDEs is to see the crash and burns. And, and there are people. Now, if you want to move back over here so people can see, please. Thank you. Good. All right. Our mini hazard over here, uh, we have an in and out gate on the far end. Um, the in and out gate is you enter a hazard through your, your in and out gate. Your time commences as you come through that gate. And you are given penalty seconds for as long as you are in the hazard. So. This is one of the fun things is you get to go really fast. <laughs> but you also have to go really accurately. So there are three gates on that, A, B, and C. I'm going to have one of the girls go through, and I would like you to do this at a working trot, please. Just, just set a, a nice working trot. I'm going to have, did you say your horse turns better left or right? OK. Higgins? Okay, he's kind of left-handed. So she's going to go through A. B is on the far end, coming this direction. You cannot go backwards through a gate to get to the next one until it's been blown, until it's dead. So if this were A and one in the middle was B and the other one was C, she could go through dead B to get to C or dead A to get to C but you cannot go backwards through one to get to the other until you've already been through it. Would you like to take a trot through there, Miss Liz? Okay. We have five minutes. 